Actually, I'm leaving right now. Yep. Can I give you a call back when I'm on the road? All right, great. Bye. All right, I'm back in New York in the heart of rattlesnake country during the heart of October, which means that all the timber rattlesnakes in the region have migrated back to their dens to seek refuge during Northeast's long winter. Timber rattlesnake migration, or ingress, begins the second half of September, just as the foliage begins to change. Before entering their dens, the snakes will bask at nearby rocky outcrops during the last mild days of early autumn. Encountering a large male at a basking rock near its wintering den. Nearby, this baby attempts to find the den for the first time by following the scent of its mother or other adults. Ingress can happen day, or if not too chilly, at night. So I have a bit of a hike left up this ridge to the timber rattlesnake den that I wanted to visit today. And welcome to a timber rattlesnake den, a very sacred place. I should mention that broadly speaking, there are three different types of timber rattlesnake dens such as a fallen rock den, talus, and this one is a ledge den. Aptly named, the entrance of the den usually sits at the base of a ledge, such as this. Some of these ledge dens will have crevices several feet up off the ground where the snakes will occasionally, well, hang out. Now the fallen rock dens occur on forested slopes. These rocks are large chunks of granite, many of which are partially buried in the soil. This arrangement sets up a network of holes for the snakes to enter deep enough to escape winter's freeze line. Talus dens are made up of a pile of loose rocks that accumulates at the base of cliffs. They are often difficult to traverse and can be overwhelming in size. But it offers a haven for timbers and other snakes as well. Other species of snakes commonly found denning alongside timber rattlesnakes in the northeast include northern copperheads, eastern black rat snakes, and the sometimes feisty northern black racer. and the eastern milk snake. Once I even found an eastern red bat roosting at a den site. 
Unfortunately, it's a little too cool for the rattlesnakes that are deep inside the den to come out and briefly bask. It's only in the mid-50s, and usually you want it at least 60 degrees or above during the active season for them to be out on the surface. All right, so despite the fact that it's too cool for the, the snakes to crawl out and bask, if you're able to look at some dens far enough back into the crevices, you can begin to see the outer opening of the heart of the den where it will go back 10 feet or more. Of course, that's not where they're gonna spend the winter. It's gonna be further back. But again, if you have a, a decent flashlight and you can squeeze into tight places and get your flashlight into tighter places, you might be able to see a snake despite that it's too cool for them to be outside. So I'm going to somehow maneuver my camera into this tight crack and let's see if I can get it to focus. Some dens are truly cave-like and allow one access much, much further back, revealing a sight like this. But a majority of ledge den openings are not much larger than this. At any rate, Timber rattlesnakes are most appreciated in the fall when they are just outside their dens amongst the fall foliage. I hope you enjoyed this timber rattlesnake den tutorial. If so, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Have a good day.